Hunter x Hunter episode 135. Wow, is there no opening this time? Just straight into it. Oh, is this the end of the arc? It can't be. No way. I'm not ready. I've been so waiting for this reunion, but... I'm also really afraid of what's, what's gonna happen. I'm looking for my Kamugi. Where is my friend? And he found her in a box for some reason. Hello, don't worry. I'm I'm good now. <laughs> God, can you imagine? No one can guess. No one can understand at first sight. You're good. The cargo and you know, palm, octopus and fish lady. Most obvious hiding places. Were you even trying? In a house in the cupboard. This person X and X this moment. He looks bigger and more handsome, and I can't tell if that's the drawing style or my conception that's changed. That might not mean what you are afraid it means. Oh wait, I even misinterpreted that. He said you won? Oh, he said the battle is over. Yeah, I mean the threat is it seems to be gone. And now that he has announced his lack of desire to subjugate humanity, he is the, the most worthy of subjugating humanity. Or, you know, being a leader. Imagine like winning the the war too while you're you're in a closet. Oh, he knows. Wow. Oh. He just accepted it. Hope he gets a win in a win in Gunji once. <laughs> Not that it matters. Hi. There's no ulterior motive. Yeah, I mean her doubt is makes sense. It's fair. I'm not killing now. Why does it upset you so much? You should be thrilled. The guilt, the flood of emotions as your preconceptions get melted away. And that was the moment where he became a god. <laughs> it's also interesting, he had this whole enlightenment scene. Like, he literally was reborn from death and became this golden creature and all that imagery and stuff. But what actually did it was the name Kamugi. Oh, this is embarrassing. Let me get her for you. I don't want you to see me taking her out of the box. Oh, that's, that's so, so sweet. It's nice. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I'm with Pom. If the king is who I think he is now. Is he bowing to her? Holy crap. I feel you, Pam. Pom. Sure. You sure you want to witness that, Palm? Are you ready? She also didn't need to ask his permission, but she did. Wow, you know who's way behind his conception of everything that's happened and really needs to be caught up? Gon. If he was pissed about Neferpidu, it's not the world that Gon was in when he slipped into unconsciousness. Nothing is the same anymore. Kalua too, but doesn't feel as threatening. Can we go home now? Not like this, not like this, not like this. Not off screen. After all that. At least Poof's final moments were with the king. At least he got to see the king be greater than he imagined. That was Poof's wish fulfilled, right? Even if it wasn't the way he expected it or envisioned it, he got to see the king's fully realized form. That's like the one point of solace I could take away from that. It's so sad that we... I mean, I didn't like Poof so much, but... He really turned a corner in that final five seconds of his life. And like I said last time, there was something really beautiful about him, even if the application or manifestation of it was really warped. But now it's both him and Yuppie. Yuppie, who I actually liked. I really liked Yuppie. I liked who he was during the fight with Knuckle. Both of them just disappeared. Gone.
Mm. Imagine her confusion if she woke up and she would not be able to get out of the box. <laughs> would you like to play? Wow, he still has <laughs> He can work on his <laughs> delivery a little bit. He's still speaking like a harsh king. Oh good, Bizef survived. That's a huge relief. Thanks. At least the good guy lived. The one we all loved. The guy we were all rooting for. At least he's okay. And no one that we liked died. You know what I was really hoping for this whole arc? Bizef, the true hero. This tree feels so long ago. It feels so long ago. A lifetime ago. Oh, they're going to use this as an opportunity. Speaking of which. Hey. Oh, God, I can imagine there being such a rift between people on the field and people sending the orders. Yeah. The people involved in this incident can never explain the extent of their experiences. And people are going to come in with demands that are just not that important in the scale and scope of what's happened. That are possibly very self-serving, opportunistic, no skin in the game. It's going to be horribly frustrating. But on the plus side, they all have each other at least. At least they're not alone in it. They have people with whom they share experience and understanding. Seeing this character who's out in the world and in a high position, I mean, I think the ants might be fine integrating into society. It's so tough. It's so tough. I guess he was a well known figure. That's really interesting. What? He's alive? Oh, he had a body double. I don't think I've ever heard it contextualized like that. It's interesting. The human life is too long to devote to reproduction, too short to devote to learning. First of all, if you think life is too long to devote to reproduction, maybe you're not doing it right. <laughs> maybe you're just not trying hard enough. The other side, though, I, I feel, and I have been thinking about recently, I was talking to a friend about this. I think the human mind is so powerful, but there's definitely a hardware limitation. Sometimes I can feel these thoughts cascading one on top of the other, and I get this powerful sense that there's something really beautiful coming. And then I, it almost feels like a physical wall or like really beautiful conceptualizations are built on other preceding layers. It's it's a synthesis. Creation, good creation often is a synthesis. And to try to visualize it, it's like I'm holding the lower blocks, the foundational blocks of the thought, and I'm building on top of that. But every layer I try to build on top of that, it adds an exponential amount of bricks to support that extra layer. And what ends up happening is the base ends up collapsing under the weight. I think one possible solution, if you take an analogy from coding, although I'm not a coder, this is a guess, is one way to get better more powerful code is to streamline things so that certain things are just so obvious you don't need to devote extra unnecessary resources towards them. So let's say you've built this tower of thought. If you can get that tower of thought into one brick somehow, and if you accumulate enough bricks of similar caliber, you can then build higher, but you can sort of see how the difficulty scales with that. And so there's just this natural, inevitable limitation of the human mind for processing. Even using tools like writing and, you know, recording yourself yapping or what have you, there's a limit. And that just is what it is. We're bound to physical bodies. And yet, I think this problem is solved. Both problems at both ends of the reproduction and the learning, when you think about what the point of it all is, which is that synthesis, right? It doesn't have to be you and it's not about you. The goal perhaps is to synthesize as much as you can in only the way that you can in whatever multitude of areas that might be for any one specific person. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be and probably often isn't intellectual thought. Reproduction is one example. At the most basic biological component, you're synthesizing two people's DNA. Beyond that, you're synthesizing a new human life that can live farther out into the timeline than you can. Any one human is limited by its hardware, just like any one human is limited by time. But humanity, life, does not have those limitations. If you do manage to harmonize your individual experiences and your gifts and your natural born talents and your location in the world and time, then you, in a sense, become one of those bricks. And the beauty of it, the glory of it is bigger than you and is intrinsically linked to you. You are not it, but it is you. And then with that framework, if you can see the importance and beauty of that, you have a purpose in life. It's at least to not destroy it. Speaking of loss of potential, right? Don't undermine it. At the minimum, that's your mission. Like if you've maintained, you've succeeded in life. And if you really want to reach for the stars, then you try to contribute to it. Or maybe a way to conceptualize it is rather than being a brick, find a way to contribute so that the building process itself is better, so that you need fewer bricks or that you can go farther with the same amount of bricks. There's so many 
ways to look at it, so many ways to go. The answer is not, this is not viable for me. This is not viable for me. So the answer is my desire, you know? Though I think this answer that we're all looking for and are dancing around and can never quite pinpoint, but can feel and have a radar for, which is why we can enjoy these shows and sort of come to a consensus about how, how certain things hit us, is that actually the best solution or relief for desire or reward is that exact contribution. Now, Real Diego on his farm in the unnamed country ends that with life is already complete. And I think that is also true. It's simultaneous. There's an unfathomable amount of beauty to existence. And you're a part of that. And so there is this great responsibility. There is this possible goodness that humans can attain. There is still something to strive for. It's not that everything is what it is and human life is pointless. That's an escape from the responsibility that the beauty shines a light on. This poor girl, all she wanted to do was play Gunji. She got roped into all of this. Well, it's been about five hours. It wasn't Poof that saved you. And then he became worthy of their loyalty. If you had told me when I started this arc that I would be on the verge of tears for three ants, four ants, I would have laughed and I would not have believed you, but I would have been hopeful. Oh, God, launched the whole thing. We knew that already. <笑>メルエム様様はいらねえ。二度言わすな。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ。ハハハ
Oh no. And yet. He's still so rude. This enlightened God, he's just so rude. Which, you know what? It makes sense. I'm not a religious scholar, but I've heard that Jesus could be rude at times. He did knock over tables, didn't he? I guess politeness does not always equal kindness. I actually could imagine, just trying to imagine, you know, this sort of enlightened mythological figure in front of me. I can imagine that some of the things he or she said would be extremely harsh. It's fairly obvious to me that a gentle demeanor does not equate to love. And there's no thoughts to his own ego, like, how could this girl be beating me? Whatever. It's just playing. She also has seen true beauty. Aww. Aww. <laughs> oh, why? I am an ant. <laughs> Not that it matters. Yeah, this too. This is a Oh, yeah, I sort of cast a dark light on this whole game, but she wouldn't care. Oh no! This is going on forever. I wish we had more time. I just depressed myself even further. Right, we've li lifted out of the game into the higher game. This is the real game. You thought you were born to rule the world. Oh, is that it? Oh no. No action this episode, no fighting, but one of the most riveting things I've ever seen. I guess we don't know who wins, and I mean, that's also fitting. It's not important. In the most important sense, they both won, like, the ultimate game. Who are the main characters of this show again? <laughs> is it not Miriam and Kamugi? Gon can only dream! Oh, yes, yes, there's more. Yes, thank God. This point, they could probably play off board without light. Uh, I'm afraid it's gonna end with her not responding. Oh, I don't like where this is going. ああ、小麦。はい、はい。何ですか I can't help but wish that she would also live. <laughs> I can't. Yay! Next episode! Hooray. Go never even met the king. <laughs> they never even met. Right? I can't remember. Did they meet? Hold on. Do we have the protagonist of the show and the villain of the show never meet each other? <laughs> Does that, that just happen? There was no like, here's my final move against your final move. Go and saw Miriam once across the courtyard before he flew off on a dragon. As far as I can recall, that was the extent of their interactions. If you could even call it an interaction. Did Miriam even see Gon? For that matter, they may have all died with some hope that Peter was still alive. On that note of things that make this notable, it answers the question really, really beautifully, so perfectly, that I think naturally nags the viewer from the beginning, that is often a nagging concern in other shows that isn't well handled, which is like, how the hell are these little kids with this extreme deficiency in power and ability gonna defeat this villain that's been established as being the biggest bad of all time. And in most shows, the answer is just like, you know, hard work, DSX Machina. And in Hunter x Hunter, it's, well, they, they just don't. <laughs> they can't. Because they couldn't in the first place. And that makes total sense. When I saw the Go and Pito episode, my thinking was, well, oh, Go and actually has a physical chance, but this is so much more satisfying. God, these two episodes sticking the landing. Look, I think for some of the arc, it's unclear. Especially, I felt the floor was pulled out from under me when they all got cancer because it eliminated the possibility of things getting resolved on, on those lines. But what I wasn't anticipating was that they were resolved along much more satisfying lines where it was really about the individuals and their journeys and their choices and their outlooks and like how close could they each get to something, for lack of a better word, I'll call truth, you could 
put any number of words there, beauty, whatever that thing is that Miriam tapped into in the end, that Gon definitely did not tap into. Gon maybe being the opposite example, the edge of darkness and despair and not caring, not loving, being a void where nothing matters. Miriam being the one to realize actually this really matters a lot. It matters a lot. And specifically this thing, this is what matters. The alignment with that is right. And it feels right and is good and is more important than all these other things. Those other things perhaps being a common road to the despair that Gon ended up in. Things like, I am the best, it's all about me, selfishness, what people think about me. You know, in Gon's case, it would be Jing through a lot of other circuits, one of which being his own mind. My life, my survival, I mourn for Gon. On the other end of that same coin by which I celebrate Miriam. Small aside, interesting to think that Palm was watching that. Palm saw that. Who will Palm be after that? How will Palm recover? Palm cannot unsee that. She almost has to be the spokesman for that. I think I understand now. I enjoyed this arc throughout. It's so creative, so original, so interesting, so compelling, so unpredictable and gripping, but having the full picture on it, it amplifies my love of it, you know, a hundredfold. And I understand all the hype now around this arc. I understand how and why this became a legendary work of storytelling. I also, it's weird. I don't know what the final arc is. I'm sure it'll be great. This show has such a wide range. I actually would welcome the chance to go back to the feel and tone of previous seasons just because that's great in a different way. But I almost feel like I understand and I'm okay with the idea that this show hasn't continued past a certain point or isn't this extended hiatus. It's almost like, well, you made the ultimate statement already. The world of Hunter x Hunter is so well conceptualized. There's so many fun things you could do with it. I've heard the author said he could write infinitely and I, I can imagine why, I can understand why. But at the same time, this arc in a very roundabout way was getting to these sort of universal things that are so great and grand that it's satisfying in a way that all the mini adventures that might follow would only be an entertaining addition. What a flood of emotions. I feel devastated, but in the best way. There's tragedy in it. You know, the king's life was cut short just in his in his greatest moments, but there was beauty contained in his life and its message that far transcends and outstrips any one individual's life. Also a huge wave of relief that Knuckle didn't die because <laughs> he was really trying.